Okay, good evening, everybody. Okay, I would like to welcome all of you back uh, from the weekend break and welcome back to another session of organic chemistry. In today's session, we are going to continue our discussion of the chemistry of aldehydes and ketones, uh, which is taken from chapter 19 of your book. But before we do that, let me uh, make a few announcements. Tomorrow, Wednesday, that is uh, February 27, there will be an online review session, and that is at 8 p.m. tomorrow, Wednesday, February 27. And also, okay, for that uh, review session, we are going to use the uh, chapter 19, end of chapter questions in our. And also on Friday at 8 p.m. Uh, to prepare for your exam, which is scheduled for Tuesday, March 5, there will be another review session at 8 p.m. for those of you who will be time to join us at 8 p.m. on Friday. That's March 1st. Okay, the reason I want to have it on Friday so I, I will have enough time to process the uh, the, uh, the video. Hopefully I will be able to post the video on Saturday. So you have get a chance to watch the video before before Tuesday. And of course you know your exam is scheduled for Tuesday, March, March 5. And also want to remind you that the homework assignment for this week uh, is the uh, chapter 19, end of chapter 19, uh, questions in hour, and that is due on Monday, March 4, at 11 p.m. Okay, so now let us get going with this chapter. <coughs> if you recall, when we, are, when we left on Thursday, we were discussing the nomenclature of aldehydes and ketones. I'm also hoping that most of you have gotten a chance to watch the uh, videos of the previous uh, 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 lecture in, on this chapter. So uh, for today, we are going to start with the reactions of uh, aldehydes, I'm sorry, with the synthesis of aldehydes and ketones, and then we'll follow that with the reactions of aldehydes and ketones, and uh, hopefully we will then uh, do some problems at the end of uh, of those uh, series of reactions. <coughs> okay, so we are going to start with the uh, synthesis of aldehydes. Now, for the most part, most of the reactions that we are going to discuss today, uh, most of them should be uh, fairly, uh, should be familiar to you and a few of them will be new reactions, so uh, we are going to cover a lot of uh, reactions today, so I do want you to, uh, to note, uh, to take a note on that. <coughs> okay, so we start with the synthesis of aldehydes. <coughs> there are several uh, synthetic methods for aldehydes. The first one we are going to consider will be oxidation. Of primary alcohols. Oxidation of primary alcohols. For this, for example, if you take I say this is a pretty familiar reaction to all of you. If you take this primary alcohol here, what reagent do we need to do this? To go from a primary alcohol to an aldehyde, what reagent do we need? PCC, very good. Okay, PCC, and that will give you So 
for taking TCC, you could go from a primary app go to an area. Now, what other reagent uh, can you use for this? What other reagent? Death matting. Uh, very good. So you could also use death matting. Uh, I heard the name. Okay, that will also do the same thing. Okay, and you could also okay two. You could also do <coughs> oxidative cleavage of a carbon-carbon double bond. Oxidative cleavage. Of carbon carbon double bond, in other words, put a uh, cleave and alkene uh, using ozo ozonolysis. In this case, if you take this molecule here, in this particular instance, the each carbon, all the carbon-carbon double bond must contain, must be attached to an hydrogen for this to work. Yeah. If you take this alkene, and you take ozone, step one, and then you follow that always what to the agent? Zinc, exactly. Zinc in acid. In this case, you will get two molecules of aldehyde because what are you doing? You are cleaving this molecule right here. Okay? So you get two molecules of an aldehyde. Another example of that for example, if you take this molecule here, so let us label this molecule as uh, we have carbon one here and carbon two. Now, if we perform ozonolysis on this molecule here, okay, which, which of this carbon will be converted to an aldehyde? One, exactly. About carbon number two? To a ketone, very good. So this becomes your ketone, and of course this here becomes your aldehyde. Okay. We could also, okay, this is uh, method number three. We could also <coughs> convert an ester to an aldehyde. Okay, so I would say reduction. of ester uh, using this is new this should be a new reagent diver. Okay? And what is diver? Diver is this here.
You are too isolated, bro. Attack to Aluminum. And also you have hydrogen attached to this aluminum here. So we call this di iso butyl di iso butyl aluminum hydride. And that is how you get your dye ball from. Okay, you have the dye for the B, the I dye, the B for the B here in dye ball, and then the aluminum A, and then finally you have the hydrogen, the hydride. So that is why we use the acronym dye ball. So for subsequent reaction, you don't need to write the structure of this molecule here. So it's just simply write dye ball. Okay. So if you take that ball, this is a very important reagent because this is the only reagent that would uh, transform an ester to an aldehyde. Say for example you take an ester. Take this ester here, and you take that ball, step one, and then step two, you add dilute acid, okay, you will get your aldehyde. So this is the only reagent that we know of, uh, at least as far as you guys are concerned, that will uh, transform an ester to an aldehyde, so you need to know that. Okay, we could give you another example. We use ethyl ester, dibol, followed by Adrenum ion, and we get the propana. Okay. So far, I have given you uh, three methods, right? Okay. <coughs> we could also, this is uh, number four. This is under the synthesis of aldehyde. Number four, we could also we could convert a carbon-carbon triple bond. Okay, this will be okay. Hydroboration, hydroboration of carbon-carbon triple bond. In other words. You know that was an alkyne to give aldehyde. Okay. Now, for example, we could add this. Generally, for this type of reaction, this, this has to be, let me qualify this, this has to be a terminal alkyne. For this, you have to use a terminal alkyne. What do you mean by that? That is an alkyne that is at the end of a carbon chain, okay? So if you take this, you have step one, I'm sure you have seen this reagent before. So now this reagent is doing something new. 
followed by hydrogen peroxide in base. That will give you an aldehyde. I know some of you will wonder, okay, we know that this reagent here, what it does normally is to add is to add water across a carbon carbon double bond. And I, that is exactly what it is it is doing here. Okay, this is actually an hydration reaction. Okay? So what it does is and also it is an anti macronical addition of water. Yes. To do what? You know, to, uh, to, to give aldehyde. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so <coughs> to give an aldehyde. Now, you, you will wonder, okay, this reagent is supposed to add water to a carbon carbon double bond. Well, that is exactly what it is doing here. It's an anti of addition of water. And so, in essence, what it does, you have this. That's what it gives us. In other words, it, it is adding, if you look at this, it is it's adding hydrogen here and hydroxy here, which is an anti macronical addition of water. But this molecule here, this compound here, we call this an enol. Okay? Enols are very unstable. Enol will rearrange to give an aldehyde. And that is what this molecule is going to do. Okay, this inner will rearrange Okay, let me make it so that it's more much more obvious. Okay, we have hydrogen here. Okay, so it will rearrange to form a carbonyl. And this will five electron will come to this carbon here. And so what do you have? You now have this. Okay? Plus this proton here. And what then happens, this proton and this here, this intermediate here, we call this an enolate ion. We refer to this as enolate ion. We are going to hear more about that later. The enolate ion will pick up the proton, and then you end up getting your, your aldehyde. So therefore, the initial product of the reaction of borane with an alkyl is an enol, then the enol will rearrange to give you the, the aldehyde. That's what happens. So it is an addition of water. And this will only happen if you have uh, a terminal alkyl. Okay, so now, so far, how many reactions have I given you for the synthesis of aldehyde for? Okay. Okay, now let us go to the synthesis of ketones. Okay, one. <coughs> okay, we could do the uh, ozonolysis. We know that already. Of a carbon carbon double bond. 
Okay, in this case, say we have this here, the carbon carbon double bond, the, the carbon, all the carbon carbon double bond must must have no hydrogen atoms attached to it in order for it to form a ketone. So in this case, we are going to form a diketone. We will clip this here. So this is not a new reaction to all of you, so it should be familiar reactions. Hopefully this is some kind of review to everybody here. So now we have Okay, the point here is that ozonolysis will cleave a carbon-carbon double bond to either form an aldehyde or ketone, and what it forms depends on what uh, type of atoms are attached to the carbon of the carbon-carbon double bond. Okay. okay, two. Okay, we could also have oxidation. of secondary alcohol. Oxidation of secondary alcohol. This should also be some kind of review to all of you here. If we take a secondary alcohol, and we take what kind of reagent do we want us to use? Which one? Can we use PCC? Yeah, we use PCC, or we could use desmartin, right? Okay. We could also use desmartin. Also, We could also use chromic acid or chromium trioxide in acidic acid, I mean, uh, yeah, in dilute acid. And that will oxidize the secondary alcohol to a ketone. Okay, I did not do the desmatting well. Desmatting also here. Okay, so this is a continuation of two. Now three. Okay, uh, the <coughs> Grignard reagent, the reaction of Grignard reagent with a nitride reaction of Grignard reagent with a nitride. Okay? This is a nitride right here. Okay. <coughs> This molecule is a nitride. Anytime you have the, this uh, cyano group attached to a carbon atom. Now, so if you take it, uh, a nitride, react with any linear reagent. Okay, we could choose any linear reagent. Let's use the methyl magnesium linear. And then we follow that always uh, dilute acid. You get a ketone. For those of you who are interested in the mechanism for this reaction, so you come and see me later. You get a ketone. A nitride will react with a to get it to give you a ketone. And so this is a general reaction. 
to use any vineyard or any nitrile. And then, of course, some of you might wonder, how do you make your nitrile? If you recall, when uh, last semester, to make a nitrile, we do a SN2 reaction with a primary substrate, for example. You can add uh, alkyl bromide, the potassium nitride, for example, the nitride is a good nucleophile, it will undergo an SN2 reaction to form the nitride. So you could form your nitrile by uh, doing an SN2 reaction with an alkyl, bromide or alkyl iodide. Okay, so that is our reaction method number three for ketones, right? Okay, about four. Okay, four will be the hydration of mercury ions, mercury two, Ion hydration catalyzed hydration of an uh, internal alkyne of an internal alkyne. Now that was an carbon-carbon uh, triple bond in the middle of chain. For example, if you take this, if you take this here. Take mercury two sulfate. <coughs> what you get is a ketone. Just as in the case of the hydration using uh, borane with the uh, with the terminal alkyne, this is also this is also an. Uh, and I, I mean addition of water to the carbon-carbon double bond, a uh, triple bond. So in this case, you get initially you get an enol, and then that enol will rearrange. You know, we we'll rearrange to give you the ketone. Okay, initially, we we'll arrange it to give you the enolate ion. Plus the a proton. Actually, the proton is not formed because this almost happens almost immediately. I just show you the proton so you have an idea what is happening here. And then this proton and the enolate ion here, this enolate ion. Combine to form this here. So it initially it is an addition of water. That, Yes, okay, very good. That is nice. The question uh, the question that has been asked here, Natalia is asking, is this a mechanical addition or anti mechanical addition? Is this a mechanical addition? But in this case you do not know whether it's a mechanical addition. Now how do you know whether it's a mechanical addition? If I give you this example here.
if I give you this example here, okay, if I now do this, okay, now what are you going to get? You get the uh, Maconic of addition, the hydrogen comes here, right? And the, the hydrosy goes here, so you now you form an inner which will rearrange to give you the methyl ketone. Now, supposing we use a uh, borate, supposing we use borate followed by peroxide, what will you get? Because that is an anti maconical addition, and that is how you get the RDS, okay? So, in this case, you get an RDS here. In this case, you have uh, this here, this carbon here, can you see that? Okay, uh, is this carbon right here. Okay, so, <coughs> uh, so far I've given you how many, yes? Uh, can we use these to, 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 to get that product? Because this is not in the return of alcohol. This, is this one? Oh, 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 yes, yes, oh, yes, okay, this, you could also use this for the uh, terminal alkyne. The, the difference here, if you use a terminal alkyne, very good. If you use a terminal alkyne, you get a metric ketone. Okay, but for the aberration, uh, you must use a terminal alkyne to get an earlier. Okay. In the case of um, uh, uh, mercury-2 catalysis to give you the, uh, the ketone, uh, you could use either a, an internal alkyne or a terminal alkyne. In this case, you use a terminal alkyne, you get a methyl ketone, okay? And if you use the same terminal alkyne with boration, you get an aldehyde. Okay. okay, I think one more method, right? For ketone, I want to give you that number four. That number four? Okay. That was number five? No, that was four. That was four, okay. Okay, I'll give you one more method. Five. Okay, this one is uh, the Gilman re uh, reagent reacting with reaction of Gilman. Reagent with acid chloride. Okay, to refresh your memory, uh, this is an acid chloride right here. Okay, to form an acid chloride, of course, you take a carboxylic acid, you can take this carboxylic acid here, We add the carboxylic acid with uh, thionic chloride. That will give you the acid chloride. And then you take the acid chloride, you react with any Gilman reagent. In this case, let us use a uh, dimethyl uh, copper lithium. I hope you did not forget your Gilman reagent. Okay, now you get your uh, ketone. Okay. So, uh, so far, let us now uh, recap everything we've done so far. How many methods have I given you for making aldehyde? Four, okay. You, you will be needing all of those four methods. Subsequently, <laughs> uh, how many methods have I given you for ketones? Five. Okay, very good. So keep in mind, all of those methods will come in very handy when it comes to uh, synthesis. 
Okay, now let us get to the uh, reactions of aldehydes and ketones. For the reactions of aldehydes and ketones, we start with the oxidation. You will find that uh, for oxidation, uh, the uh, aldehydes are very readily oxidized to carboxylic acid. Indeed, aldehydes are a lot more reactive than than ketones okay, for because of steric uh, uh, factor. Okay, so if we take this here, if we take this, we could use chromic, chromic acid. Okay, chromic acid will oxidize an RDI to a carboxylic acid. Another reagent that will oxidize a, an aldehyde to carboxylic acid is this reagent here, uh, silver, silver oxide in ammonium hydroxide. This reagent will also oxidize an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid. Indeed, we refer to this this particular reagent here, we refer to this as a toluene reagent. So sometimes you may just see toluene reagent, that is what that is. Okay? And also sometimes we refer to this as a silver mirror reagent. Yes. Which one? The reagent? Oh, tell me, okay. Reagent. This here? Can you read this? No. <laughs> oh, 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 AG2, I'm sorry. AG2, I'm sorry. Silver 2. <laughs> this is silver. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, silver oxide in a monium hydroxide. Okay, we also call this reagent silver mirror reagent because it is one of those reagents that we use uh, to determine the presence of, uh, of an aldehyde. If you add that reagent to a solution that contains an aldehyde in a, in, a, in a flask, you see a mirror, you actually see yourself, you know, you almost, the silver will be deposited on the surface of the, of the glassware and then you actually see yourself, so we call it silver uh, mirror reagent, and very often we call it silver mirror test for the presence of aldehyde. Okay, so if you see a silver mirror test or silver mirror reagent or to lose reagent, that is what they are referring to this here. Okay, it will uh, oxidize an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid. Okay, that is reaction one. Now, we will also, in the case of ketones, ketones are not readily oxidized uh, because, so, I mean, we, there is really no useful oxidative process for ketones, so I will not talk about oxidation for ketones. So the next set of reactions I will be giving you will be uh, what we call nucleophilic. addition. to aldehydes and ketones. Some of this you already know. For example, uh, we have uh, 
reduction, meta hydride reduction. Let me call this since we have two, two edge. Okay, meta hydride reduction. In this case, if you take an aldehyde, now what is the meta hydride, by the way? You guys know what are the meta hydride reagents? Yes, yeah, sodium borohydride and, and, yeah, lithium aluminum, yes. Sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride, okay? So if you take an aldehyde, you take sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride. You follow this up with uh, adrenium ion. Okay, what is the product you are going to get with an aldehyde? Primary alcohol. You should know that. Okay, very good. Okay, remember we gave you the mechanism of this reaction earlier. Okay, the same thing could happen with a ketone. Okay, so don't go hydride. Step one, followed by addition of dilute acid. You get what kind of alcohol do you get with the ketones? Check on the alcohol. Yes. So the same thing will happen with lithium aluminum hydride. Okay? You also use lithium aluminum hydride. The LAH, lithium aluminum hydride, followed by dilute acid. We say we have, okay, so this would be uh, 2, is that 2B, right? Okay. Okay. Do the same thing with the ketones. The LAH followed by adrenum iron. You get a secondary alcohol. Okay, so now that is our two. Okay, reaction number three. You got this? Okay. Number three. <laughs> huh? Oh, go back. Oh, one minute. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you said go on. <laughs> Okay, now let's do our number three. Okay, formation of cyanohydrins. Keep in mind, these are all nucleophilic additions to carbon uh, oxygen double bond. Formation of uh, cyanohydrin by a reaction with nitride. Okay. 
If we have this aldehyde or ketone, this could be aldehyde or ketone. And you have potassium cyanide in the presence of hydrogen cyanide. Okay, what to do? You get this mo this molecule here. This is what we call a cyanohydrate. Now, a cyanohydrate is that molecule in which you have an hydroxy group is attached to the same carbon, and that same carbon, that the same carbon is also attached to a nitride. Anytime you see a molecule in which both nitride and hydroxy group are attached to the same carbon atom, then you say this is a cyanohydrin. Okay? Uh, later on, you will find that this will be very useful in terms of, uh, of uh, a synthetic application for the future. Okay? Because we could take this cyanohydrin oxidized to carboxylic acid. Uh, we will do that in chapter 22. Okay? Now, the same thing will happen with a ketone. Okay. Now, what is the uh, mechanism for this reaction? Essentially, we have this. The nitride comes in here. Attack this here. And that is why we call all of these reactions nucleophilic addition. It is very similar to what happened with the hydride reacting with the carbonyl. So now you get this here. And then the proton from the hydrogen cyanide will come in. And I will protonate the intermediate alkoxide ion. And that's how you get your product. You will notice all of these nucleophilic addition reactions most of the mechanisms are basically all the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, reaction number four. Okay. Number four. <coughs> reaction with a vineyard. You all know that, right? Reaction with uh, Greenyard. Okay. Okay. If a Greenyard react with an Adiad, what we get? You, you all should know that. A secondary apple, yes. And you should know the mechanism also. We all know the, we gave you the mechanism earlier. Okay, let us use a phenyl magnesium vineyard. And then we follow this up with a adrenum iron. Okay, I say you all know the mechanism similar to the mechanism I just gave you for the cyanide. <coughs> and of course, if you have a ketone, okay, 
Here we are with ketone. Let's use ethyl magnesium uh, green yard. Step one, I will follow that all with adrenum iron. Now, what do we get? A tertiary alcohol. Very good. So that is the action number four, right? Okay. Is that it? Okay, number five. The reaction with Primary amine. I will show you what the primary amine is in a few seconds. To give compound that we call uh, it means. Now, what does that mean? <coughs> this molecule here. This is what we call the primary amine, in which you have a carbon atom is attached to nitrogen, and that nitrogen is attached to two hydrogen atoms. That is a primary amine. Okay? Now, if you take a primary amine, you react with with an aldehyde or ketone, let us use a, use a specific primary amine. Here we take this. Generally, when we do this reaction, we do this in a, a acid a medium. You get this molecule here. This molecule we call an amine. Anytime you see a carbon nitrogen double bond, we call this an amine. Okay. Uh, this is also very useful when we get to uh, later on in uh, chapter 23 when we start making uh, amines. Okay. Now let me give you the mechanism of this reaction. This is reaction number five. Okay. Mechanism of amine formation. I'm sorry, amine formation. Okay, you have. Let us take. A, let us take a ketone. This will also happen with. Happen with an aldehyde. Take a ketone. Okay. Of course, first thing that happens, you get protonation. So this happens in the presence of dilute acid. So you get protonation of the carbonyl oxygen, and that should not be new to all of you. And then you get it protonated <coughs> oxygen. And then we could write the resonance structure for that.
Now you now are, I'm sorry. It is now, this is the uh, hydrogen here. And there is a positive charge on this carbon here. Now what is now going to happen? They'll take our main say this primary amine right here. For the primary amine, recall that on nitrogen you do have a pair of non burning electrons on nitrogen, so that will act as a nucleophile comes in here. Attach this. So you form this intermediate. Now this nitrogen is now positively charged. Okay. Now the next thing that will happen will be the transfer of a proton to the oxygen atom, almost as though you have an intramolecular acid base reaction. Simply comes here, picks up this proton here, and that will release electron to nitrogen. So now you are, huh? You don't want to. You don't want to see the mechanism. Oh, you can see. It's too crowded. Okay, let me. It's too crowded in that region. Okay. Ah, okay. Let me, let me make some space here. Can you see that? Okay. Now the nitrogen is positively charged. So at this point, oh wait a minute, something else is sorry. There is this is not here. Okay. We have this number in pair of electrons here. Okay. Now there will now be an intramolecular acid base reaction in which now you have this oxygen will pick up the proton and in so doing the proton will release the pair of electrons to nitrogen. Okay? And then you form this from another intermediate. Okay, so what do you think will happen at this time? What I will leave exactly. What I will leave, take away. Okay. And when it breaks away, of course, we have our cation is formed.
خجالت درد انصار Now, as often now the nitrogen will now form a, a nitrogen carbon bond that yeah, is coming here. Okay, so now the nitrogen is positively charged, right? So finally, what happens, remember that we, we have formed water right here, water is formed right here. Finally, that water comes here. Comes here to abstract the proton from nitrogen. And therefore, so the electron will be released to nitrogen, and that's how you form your amine. I promise I will not give you too many mechanisms today, but I thought this is very important. And that's how you form your amine. Okay? Notice this are this start off with <coughs> nucleophilic addition in which case the nitrogen is acting as a nucleophile attached to the attaches itself to the carbonyl carbon. Okay, and then everything just uh, happens uh, subsequently. Okay. Okay, so now that was reaction number five, formation of uh, amine. Okay. That is uh in other words, even any time you take a primary amine, you react with an aldehyde or ketone, you will get an amine. Okay, reaction number six. Formation. What? A couple of months to digest this material. A couple of months? Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, well, this, this, this chapter has a lot more reaction than most chapters. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, the yeah, formation of uh, in amine. In amine. Uh, by reaction of aldehyde and ketone. And ketones with a secondary amine. This case, a secondary amine. A secondary amine. Okay. Now, if you have a ketone or an aldehyde. In this case, you take a secondary amine, a secondary amine, of course, is that molecule in which you have two carbon atoms attached to nitrogen, and only one hydrogen is attached to that nitrogen. That would be a secondary amine. So if you take that, say, for example, we take this here. This secondary amine, of course, this reaction also takes place in the presence of acid catalyst. You get an inamine, you 
Okay, now see, this is what we call an enamine. Think of an enamine as a vinyl amine because you have a carbon carbon double bond attached to nitrogen. Think of it as a vinyl amine. Vinyl amine. Okay, you get this enamine. Uh, enamines are very uh, useful uh, 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 reagent for, uh, for for synthetic purposes. When we get to chapter 23, of course, we are going to we are going to hear more about this uh, type of molecule enamine. Now, uh, I would not give you the mechanism of this reaction, but believe me, the mechanism goes to the formation of an amine type molecule, and then from the amine, then it goes to give you the enamine. Okay. But just uh, trust me, reaction of the secondary amine with a ketone or aldehyde give you an enamine, which is essentially uh, a vinyl amine. Another example of that, let us use this term, use an aldehyde. To take this. Take this uh, take this secondary amine okay this time you get Okay, to get an enamine. Okay, so this is like I said, this is a very useful reaction. Okay, we're going to hear more about this. Okay, uh, that's reaction number six, right? Okay, reaction number. Oh, go back. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> yes, we do have to know this for the exam. Once we, fin we, we are going to finish all the reactions today, on Thursday, all we will be doing is nothing but problems. Okay? Yes. On Thursday. <laughs> all we are going to do on Thursday is nothing but problems, okay? We are almost finished. Almost. Just two more reactions. Okay, so we get it once, I think the Banaios reactions also. Okay. Are you finished with this? Okay. Okay. <laughs> what are you saying? Are we going to... <laughs> he told I was just giving you this for fun, right? <laughs> no, no, you need to know this. Okay. Number seven. This is a new reaction. We think, uh, let me add what I call this, reaction of, okay, reaction uh, with, we think the agent to give Akin, uh, this is a very, very good reaction, very useful reaction. Now, what is a Wittig reagent? Anytime you have, you have you have triphenyl Triphenyl phosphine. This phosphorus here is attached to 
a carbon atom very similar to linear reagent. Okay, let us say attached to this here. And this carbon atom here is negatively charged, and this phosphorus is positively charged. This is a weak reagent. Of course, we call it we call it a yield. A weak. <coughs> okay, we could write the resonance structure for this, in which we seem to have this. So, in many places, you will see. The weak reagent written as a carbon phosphorus double bond, or very often you see uh, the carbon is written as a as an anion. Okay, so this is a weak reagent. <coughs> now, <coughs> what is, now how does it work? No, what does it do? Not how does it work? If you take a weak reagent, by the way, huh? Go back. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you want me to take a break? Is that what you're telling me? Okay. You ready? Okay. Okay, very often, by the way, how much time do we have left? <laughs> <laughs> Take a witty reagent. Very often, we could write the witty reagent just like this. Okay, in which you have the uh, pH represent the uh, the the phenyl group, or you could use the uh, the Greek symbol. Uh, this, this here. Okay, so any one of these could represent the Wittig reagent. Okay, so if we take a Wittig reagent, say for example, this Wittig reagent here. If you take this, this is what you get. It's really a very, very neat reaction. You go directly from a carbon oxygen double bond to a carbon carbon double bond. That is the only reagent that would transform a carbon oxygen double bond directly to a carbon carbon double bond. Okay? Another example, for example, if you use this. Okay, that will give you this here. Okay, so that reagent will uh, transform a uh, replace a carbon oxygen double uh, double bond with a carbon carbon double bond. So the weak reagent will do that. And so now finally, reaction number eight. So five more minutes. And then we will be finished with uh, this chapter. Almost. Eight. Conjugate as the I mean one four addition. One four nucleophilic addition.
2 2 and alpha beta unsaturated Tito, I hope you remember chapter 14, the first chapter we did. If, for example, we have this here, okay, this is, this is an alpha, beta, unsaturated ketone. This position here is what we refer to as the alpha position, and this here is what we refer to as the beta position. Now, if you take an alpha beta unsaturated molecule and you take, for example, the Gilman reagent, take the Gilman reagent, then you follow it up with uh, dilute acid. What you get is you get addition. of the Gilman reagent to the beta carbon. To the beta carbon. Same thing, for example, if you take cyanide, acting as a nucleophile, in the presence of hydrogen cyanide, of course, what you also get, get addition to the beta carbon. Now, unlike the green yard, if you do the same reaction with the green yard, the green yard will add to, let me go to the next page, one more reaction. On the other hand, if you take green yard, no, we are, we are, we are true now, we are true. If you take green yard, right? The green yard after the hydrolysis, it does a one-two addition. It does not add to the beta carbon. So there is a difference. The green yard will simply add to one-two to the carbonyl carbon. On the other hand, say for example, you take say your Gilman again. Okay, the Gilman will go to the beta position. It's a very useful reaction indeed. Okay, so now we have finished chapter 19. So when we come on Thursday, all we are going to do is just uh, work in progress. And don't forget, I will, there will be a 20 minutes of quiz on now. Uh, and Thursday. And then tomorrow, uh, for those of you who can join us at 8 p.m., that is tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, we will have an online review session. Okay? And then another one on Friday. So, which one tomorrow? No, 17, 18, and 19. Okay, so enjoy the rest of your evening. Is <laughs> that for sure, right?